Hi and welcome back. Now that we've learned the basics of working with CSS, we're ready to go back to our uh, Manchester Project website and start formatting the uh, layout. So I'm going to go ahead and click my drop down arrow here and go back into my project folder. And you'll remember we have main.html here is our HTML file. And you'll remember when we take a look at this in Chrome, again, all we see is the content. We haven't added any structure at all to this page. I'm sorry, we haven't added any formatting at all to this page. We do obviously have the structure because we created the HTML. And I'm going to go ahead and also open up the completed version of this project, ManchesterTemplate.info, so that we have a guide to go on. And we'll go ahead and minimize that. And here we are back inside of our project. Now, the first thing that we want to do is we want to connect our CSS file to our HTML file. And you'll remember when we first set up this project, we just created a file called styles.css and placed that in our CSS folder. If you haven't um, done that up to this point, you just want to right click right here and select new file and name it styles.css. And I'm going to open it up and you can see this is just a completely empty CSS file with the exception of this comment up here at the top. So now what we want to do is we want to come into the head section and create the link between those two files. So I've gone ahead and created an extra blank line there and we're going to use the link statement. You'll remember to link a style sheet to an HTML page we have to include four attributes in the link tag. And the first was the href attribute. And this was basically the link or the path to our style sheet. And I'm going to go ahead and select my browse option right here. Double click on CSS and select styles.css. The second attribute that we're going to go ahead and place in is the relationship attribute or the REL attribute to define what type of relationship exists between this HTML file and styles.css. And again, we're going to select style sheet as the um, value for that attribute. Well, now that we know what file is being linked and what kind of file it is, we need to know what type of style sheet we're working with because there are different types of style sheets. Whoops. So I'm going to go ahead and define this as a text CSS style sheet. And finally, we want to put the media attribute in. And this is a style sheet intended for screens and not printers or other types of output devices. So we've successfully gone ahead and created the link between these two files. Now there's nothing in our CSS file right now at all. So there's really no way to see at this point visually whether or not you actually have a connection between the two items. But what I want you to notice is that a new line has appeared here in Dreamweaver above or right below your tabs but above your toolbar and you should see source code and styles.css if you don't see this line for some reason just go ahead and close your files and then reopen them up and if I click on styles.css here whether this file is open or not you should see that CSS file and if I was to go ahead and make a change to my CSS file, I'm just going to go ahead and type hi right there. You'll see that appears there. And again, this is called the related files area. 
and any file that you have a relationship to will be listed up here. Later when we start working with a lot of JavaScript files, you're going to see additional items appear up here in this um, toolbar area. Now there's one very common error that actually happens at this point and that's that you incorrectly put the path in here. You maybe misspell something or select the wrong file. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and put an extra S in there. And when you click on the styles.css at this point, actually I'm going to go ahead and open that back on up, you're going to see this error here. It says styles.css is not on the local disk. If you ever get this error, the problem is in the value for your href here. And you may be able to, like in this case, I can look and see obviously what the problem is and just directly correct it. But if you can't see what the problem is, this is what you're going to do. You're going to highlight that value, including the quotation marks. You're then going to type a quotation mark and you'll see that browse option comes up. Either click it or press enter and you'll go back into this select file dialog box. And what you need to do is you need to go into your project folder, go into your CSS file, folder I should say, and select your CSS file. And then click OK and it will put the correct item or the correct path in there for you. And now when I click on styles.css here, you can see the item does appear. So that's the answer to that very common um, issue that comes up. Now I'm going to jump back into Google Chrome here and take a look at our completed project. And the first thing that I want to do in laying out this page is I want to set the width of my design and I want to center that design on the page. And we then want to go ahead and put this background pattern on our page. So we're going to define the width, we're going to center it, and we're going to set the background for the uh, page. So now I'm going to go ahead and go back into Dreamweaver here and you can work in your styles.css just by clicking right here. I usually prefer to open that file up, just a matter of uh, preference. So the first thing we want to do is we want to define the width of our elements and we also want to um, center those elements on the page. Now, at this point we have a little bit of a, a problem and that's because nothing connects all of these different elements together. So if I want to define the width of these different page elements, for instance top and top nav and banner, and again you know, we'll take a look at that, I'm going to need to do them all individually and position them all individually. And that's going to be a lot of work to do. There's a very simple way around that. And that's by creating what's called a wrapper div. A wrapper div. And all a wrapper div is a div that contains other divs for the purpose of positioning them. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to click on the blank line in between body and my first div which is top and I'm going to create another div and I'm going to give it the ID wrapper and then I'm going to go ahead and scroll all the way down to the bottom just below or just above the body closing body tag and I'm going to close that wrapper div. So you can now see that I have a div that contains all of the other items, all the other elements, divs, 
on my page. So now it's a very simple matter of defining the width and the position for the whole layout because all I have to do is create a style for my wrapper and you'll remember when we're creating ID styles we use that number sign there and then go ahead and set the width which is going to be 900 pixels for this design. I'm going to go ahead and save that and now let's go ahead and take a look at this in design view and you can see the width has now been set for my project. And now what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to center that by using the margin property. And you'll remember if we use two properties such as 10 pixels and auto the first property is going to set the top and the bottom margin and the second property is going to set the left and the right margin space. Since we set it for auto it's going to give us an equal amount of space on both sides to center our item. And you can see here now what I, the way this is being set up. And again in Dreamweaver's design view if you select that wrapper div, that outer div, you'll see the margin space in this crosshatch and you'll also see that it's centered on the page. And obviously if I want to go ahead and preview this in Chrome I can and I can see that everything is nicely centered and sized. Now I want to go ahead and set the background for the entire page. Now this area out here is outside of the wrapper. So only the area inside of here that's inside of the wrapper. So we can't we don't want to set this background texture for our wrapper we want to set this background texture for the body of the page. So I'm going to go ahead and again when we look at this in code view it's this tag that we're defining right here in our CSS. I'm going to go ahead and add another style in here for body and you'll remember when we do tag styles we don't put any prefix on it at all. ID styles get the number sign, class styles get the period, but tag styles don't get anything at all. And then I'm going to go ahead and put in my curly brace to start my style and the property that I'm going to go ahead and use is background image, background image. And I'm going to select the browse option from right here and again this select file dialog box comes up. You're going to be using that browse option a lot in Dreamweaver. And then I'm going to go ahead and use my up one level button because I'm in my CSS folder right now. And I want to go into my images folder and I'm going to go into my BG folder. If you're not using the um, resources that come with our completed project you can go ahead and use any background texture you want um, um, for your um, project and I'm gonna select this orange background texture right here I'm gonna go ahead and click OK and I'm gonna go ahead and put a semicolon in to close that property value statement off now I need to specify that not only do I want to use this background texture, I want it to repeat all over the page so it fills the body of my page. So I'm going to go ahead and use the property background repeat and the value that I'm going to use is just simply repeat. And then I'm going to go ahead and close my curly brace to close my style. And now let's go ahead and see the way this looks in our browser. 
I've gone back into my main.html file. I'm going to open this up in Chrome, and there we can see the background texture. But obviously, we can see a problem here because the background texture is showing on the entire page, including our wrapper area here that contains all of our page elements. So we need to add one more style into our wrapper style. And that's going to be the background color property. And I'm going to go ahead and put three F's in. And again, you can use Dreamweaver's color wheel here, but three F's represents white. I'm going to save that. And now we'll go ahead and preview this again in our browser. And we can see the way that's going to um, appear. Later, we're going to go ahead and put some padding and some um, spacing around the different elements that are in here. But this is the way we're going to leave it for right now. So we can already start to see our page start to um, take shape. In the next um, video, we're going to go ahead and set up this top section here and also our top navigation and our banner area. So I'll see you in the next video.